Hey, what's up, guys? I hope everyone's having an amazing day. Whether you're here live or you're chilling and watching the VOD, we are going to have some of the highest quality gameplay in Clash Royale history. If you guys don't know who Yersin CZ, CZ is, he is one of the best, if not the best, 2.6 player of all time. This guy is incredible. He has won a lot of matchups that are incredibly challenging, especially against people that are like Usopp that has been number one in the world numerous, numerous times. Uh, so we're going to break down some of the best 2.6 Hog Rider gameplay that you'll ever see in the game. And we'll give you guys uh, inside knowledge and tips from someone that was a former pro. So, you know, a lot of times when you're watching gameplay and you don't get commentary, it might be harder for you to know what's actually happening. So hopefully my insights and my thought process, uh, my reactions, I haven't watched these games yet before. We'll be able to give you guys some uh, inside knowledge on what uh, Yerson's thinking or at least some cool tips and tricks. All right, sorry about the black screen right there. I'll just make sure that we go black screen one more time in case something uh, happens. Oh, okay. Hopefully that doesn't uh, continue to mess up. But yeah, he's going to start off the game with an Ice Spirit. Obviously he likes doing that a lot because it gives him chip damage on the tower. Um, skeletons are also something that you see people cycle in the back and they split them. The reason why they never really drop them all on one side is maybe someone's going to end up having a Mother Witch. So if you go in for them all on the same side, that's a lot of piggies all going in the exact same lane back towards you. So if you guys are wondering why do pro players do that, that's why they split their skeletons. So we'll see what Yersin does here. He's just going to log the uh, Spear Goblins as well. And uh, obviously when you are playing against a Miner deck, usually what you want to have in your hand is you're going to be saving your Ice Spirit for that Miner. So it wouldn't surprise me to see Yersin just continuously save that Ice Spirit for every single interaction uh, coming forward. So when you're playing against... Mighty Miner, the main thing that you're going to see from uh, Yersin and then top level players is they'll consistently go in for um, like some skeletons or something in the middle. So then the Mighty Miner, when it clicks the ability, it will stay in the middle. Really good usage of the Hog Rider to pull back the Mighty Miner to the other side and make sure that you can defend with absolutely no damage on his tower. Um, generally, when you're playing 2.6, you want to outcycle your opponent's buildings and single elixir if they're having a heavy building like an Inferno Tower or Tesla. So what Yersin did there was... You know, he found out that his opponent ended up having a cannon, so that's not necessarily super easy. He does cycle the Ice Spirit there, so he's going to be able to finish off the Wall Breakers with a log. Really good play. He lets the Miner lock onto the tower and goes in for Skeletons there. That's pretty good, too. Um, if you guys didn't know, letting the Miner lock onto your tower and then dropping the Skeletons afterward, it's going to do the exact same damage as a Miner, you know, directly hitting the tower. So, or the Miner finishing off the Skeletons, because... Um, even if the skeletons don't catch it, the, the skeleton's firepower is, um, pretty similar to not catching it, which is pretty weird, but, like, if you keep the skeletons alive, obviously, they're gonna have more damage per second than if they die, so, I guess it kind of makes sense from that perspective. So, fireball comes down, Yersin's gonna fireball predict on top of the cannon, doesn't hit it, but he's at least gonna get chip damage on the tower. He drops skeletons, and, uh, he's gonna be able to catch the miner with a, uh, with those skeletons and then log it back, so the reason he caught it there is just obviously if he's able to finish it off with the log, really good play he's denying almost all the damage and going in for fireball cycles because if you think about it are you going to be able to beat one of the best players in the world with minor cycle um that knows how to play this deck super super well if you don't get a, a, a damage lead with the fireball because it's really hard to get the hog rider through so if you're not able to get the hog rider through then you at least have to keep up pace and keep it kind of like an even damage situation um because the miner can get directly on top of the tower so that's guaranteed damage for uh usof but Every chance that Yersin gets, he's going to be fireballing the bats and he's going to be fireballing on top of um, the tower just to make sure that because the hog is not going to get through, he's got to find damage in some aspect. A lot of people, when they're playing against a minor control deck, they're like, what am I supposed to do with hog rider? I just lose. This matchup is impossible. But if you get an early damage lead in single elixir and then you keep it by fireballing whenever your opponent drops anything behind the tower and you have really good defenses, you can make it happen. So just want to continue to highlight that there. See the fireball comes down from uh, Usopp. He's going to try to get like a wall breakers connection here because he knows that, you know, he needs to, you know, get more damage than just minor on tower. He's going to go for minor and wall breakers almost every time trying to bait out a cannon because it's going to be a, a plus one trade against the cannon. But as you can see, uh, Yersin doesn't really want to drop the cannon unless he has to on top of the minor because, well, obviously it's a, a pretty bad interaction. He wants to go in for skeletons and ice spirit because it will allow him to cycle back to his hog rider a bit faster. He's going to log on the cannon there, and he's going to be one card away from hog rider, so he should be dropping that any second now. Um, drops the hog rider in the middle, um, trying to, you know, make sure that if his opponent was going to go for a fireball, he wouldn't be able to hit it. So that's why he dropped the, the hog rider in the middle. He's like, okay, this guy's making predictions. We don't really want to let him fireball on top of the musketeer and the hog rider all at once. Um, 
Mighty Miner building up a bigger push. Not something that's super scary as long as he goes in for a Musketeer up higher so then he can't fireball on top of the tower with the Musketeer. So that's why the Musketeer is placed there. But like, okay, you're not going to be able to fireball that tower. It's pretty important to do. If you guys want to, you know, incorporate that spacing into your own gameplay, you'll be very happy. Uh, he's going to log that back as well so then the, the wall breakers don't connect. And you guys are noticing that almost all of his damage in this type of matchup when it's a complete hard counter, like Usopp is definitely hard countering the heck out of him. Um, is always coming from the fireballs. The hog better was able to slip through in one situation, but that was when Usopp um, was over committing and trying to get damage. So Ice Spirit comes down again. Uh, doesn't have anything to catch the miner here. This is a pretty bad hand, but he's going to go for a cannon and then cycle back to the skeletons. And triple elixir, you can get back to stuff pretty fast and that goes a fireball and wins the game. That is actually a definition of like a textbook hard counter for Usopp against Jerson. But um, yeah, that was, uh, that was that was pretty good. But let's go on to the next one. We're just going to continue to go through all these games today, guys. Um, we're going to be breaking down some of the best players in the world gameplay. And uh, I just wanted to have a different type of style of video for you guys today. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. And uh, it's going to be a short stream. It's going to be 30 minutes. But I, I want to hopefully help everyone get better at the game. And, you know, I like reviewing top players. I like learning from them, especially someone as good as Yersin. So, yeah, he also um, just a really nice guy, too. Anyway. Uh, getting back to the gameplay here, we see a bat and we see a mini P.E.K.K.A. getting cycled on offense. Gerson really wants to keep that cannon alive, so he's going to go for an Ice Spirit. And the reason why is he just doesn't want his opponent to be able to go in for like a Sparky plus a, a Giant. If the opponent was able to go for a Sparky plus a Giant, then Gerson would be in some serious trouble because he wouldn't have had any building to go and pull the Giant. So that's why he kept that alive. Okay, so really good for Gerson, getting a lot of damage in Sync Elixir. Generally, if you outpace the mini P.E.K.K.A., that's where the Hog Rider becomes dangerous for their opponent. Because maybe they'll have Skeleton Army, but usually when they're running a Sparky deck, they're going to end up having a Minion Horde plus Minions version at top ladder. So if you're able to go for a Hog Rider, you're going to be able to guarantee a very nice defense by just kiting that for uh, only one Elixir with Skeletons or finishing it off with Ice Spirit or Ice Golem. So you generally, uh, the Mini Pack is going to be the scariest card against the Hog Rider, and uh, that's the only thing that Yerson's scared about. Anyway, he goes in for the Hog Rider in the right-hand side, even though he has a lot of damage in the left-hand side. And the reason why he goes in the right-hand lane, you guys might not expect this, but like, he doesn't even care if it's a negative trade against the mini pack. He just doesn't want his opponent to have enough Elixir to the point that they can go in for like a Minion Horde plus Miner and Bats with the Sparky. Because it's really easy to defend these Sparky pushes if you end up having a, a situation where their opponent can't uh, drop too much with the Sparky. So just... Even if it's a negative trade, just trying to make sure that you're both playing a low elixir game. Really unfortunate that the opponent ended up having minor plus arrows there, so he was able to get a connection. Usually the Sparky decks don't have that, so there wouldn't have been as much tankage for the uh, for the Sparky, right? And then also um, there wouldn't have been able to any way to finish off the minor or the Musketeer there, but like arrows plus uh, minor was able to clean that up. So this is also not another really tough matchup. One thing to consider, if you guys are ever playing any cycle deck, you can fireball twice and then log on top of the Sparky and it's going to die. So that's, a, I assume, what Yersin's doing here. If he's able to fireball on top of the Sparky, it will die. So I think he's going to do it. No, he fireballs on top of the Minion Horde instead. You know why? Uh, he's actually knowing that he's able to defend this with just Skeletons. His opponent thought he was going to fireball on top of the Sparky. See, that's that's the difference between the best player in the world and then me playing 2.6 Hog Rider. I've been like, oh man. I have to fireball on the Sparky because two fireballs and a log kills it. The opponent made a prediction expecting him to fireball on top of the, the Sparky. And he dropped a Minion Horde. And then Gerson's just like, you know what? I just killed a Minion Horde. You have nothing tanky for the Sparky. So then I can just drop Skeletons and Ice Spirit. So that, those type of mind games at top ladder, that's what separates the best players from people that just play the deck casually for fun, right? They uh, they know what their opponent's going to be thinking. And then they make the next play. And they... They make like two-step predictions. So this Sparky is a little bit scary, but two fireballs will take it out. I think he's going to go in for one fireball and two logs. So we'll see if he logs on top of the Sparky. Doesn't actually want to do that. He just goes in for a Hog Rider to pull it back. Uh, not going to fireball on top of that because he has Musketeer. And oh yeah, actually he can just win with a log. Did not expect that Hog Rider to get a hit. So yeah, that was really, really well played from Yerson. Flex another win. So cool to see those mind games. Like a lot of people at top ladder will identify, hey, this is a... This is something that I've seen a million times. I have seen so many 2.6 players uh, fireball on top of the Sparky, and then I'm going to make another prediction, and then they get screwed over because the guy is just thinking three steps ahead. Um, yeah, I, hopefully you guys enjoy this as much as I am. It's really cool to continue to learn. So let's jump into the next one. Let's see what else uh, Yerson has up his sleeve. Keep figuring out. So this is another minor deck with Giant. Um, anything with minor is going to be way harder because... 
if you have musketeers and your opponent doesn't have minor and they're just cycling a giant or a golem into you you just go in for musketeer if they fireball zap you can just get back to another musketeer and you're probably going to be fine so cycling the musketeer early on is still like not a bad play against a lot of people that don't have miners but minor minor is a little bit more tricky because um obviously it can get on top of the musketeer and it can throw away a lot of interactions that would usually go your way so Yersin is going to be able to defend his musketeer as much as possible here make sure it doesn't take any damage so the opponent isn't able to just like zap it away the thing that's interesting here is he's going dual lane pressure and probably the reason is he doesn't doesn't want his opponent to be able to throw down a prince and then counter the musketeer and the hog rider at once because the musketeer is pretty flimsy right so if he was able to kill the musketeer then it would immediately go onto the hog rider afterward and it just it wouldn't work so well for your son so he's trying to make sure that hey my opponent has heavy cards in their deck he's gonna have like a prince response for every single side like let's make him drop all nine of his elixir at the very start of the game also but against double prince unlike a mini pekka it will not be able to one shot the uh well, won't be able to two shot uh the the hog rider so you'll see yursin time and time again when his opponent's elixir is low going in for the hog rider so then his opponent can't afford a full counter to the hog rider in single elixir it's really difficult for your opponent to be able to defend completely against the hog rider when they only have like a giant minor deck with double princes maybe the electro wizard paired with something else like electro wizard plus prince electro wizard plus mega minion that's like a seven elixir investment bare minimum and that's never able to shut down all the damage from the hog rider so pretty disgusting as i said before he's going to want to cycle his musketeer because it doesn't decay over time like a cannon would the cannon's hp would fall and uh, go down a little bit lower so that's one thing that i've noticed a lot you're going to see this every single game yursin goes other side while his opponent is playing aggressive because if his opponent doesn't respect that hog rider he will lose his entire tower and one other thing to consider guys if you're playing against someone that's got a beatdown deck it's okay to switch sides you generally don't want to be going same side as your opponent if you're playing a, a hog rider deck and you're playing into a golem or a giant player you can start going in whatever side your opponent's not going in uh and you're going to be in a better spot than you just ramming hog riders into their princes and then being like i am dedicated to this lane so notice how he switched sides and now he's probably going to go back to the left hand lane with this next hog rider just because he doesn't want to go into the prince you just can't be too committed to uh, one side. So he's going to go for like a cannon, probably an ice spirit, and then a hog rider. Um, we'll see if that plays out as I expect. Yeah, so that's what he's doing. Maybe he doesn't hog rider here. Maybe he's just super, super scared of this push. Yeah, he's going to cycle a couple musketeers because the the the, um, the the best answer to the musketeer, the miner, is out of cycle. And he goes in for a hog rider on the right-hand side just to pull back his opponent's units a little bit. Um, maybe he's going to start staying in the right-hand side. We'll, we'll see. Usually, I would expect him to go other side, but maybe he's going to try to keep the Musketeer alive and then continue to in the right-hand lane. We'll have to wait and see what Yersin is thinking. Well, actually, he has his opponent has more damage in the left-hand lane, so maybe that's why he's continuing to go in on the right-hand side. I thought that his opponent had more damage in the right-hand side, but no, no, no. That, that's, that's the reason why he's continuing to go in the right-hand lane, because he doesn't want his opponent to have counter push in the side that he already has more damage. So that's, the, for the most part, the reason why he was staying in that side for so long. Um, all right, Hog Rider coming through the left, always switching sides whenever he gets the chance when, you know, towers are even and doesn't want to give his opponent the ability of, like, racking up more damage in the side that he's already committed a lot of elixir to. And now he's in the perfect spot. He's in the left-hand lane, going for Hog Riders when his opponent's at low amount of elixir when he feels comfortable that he can defend. The best 2.6 player in the world will always go in for a Hog Rider when his opponent's elixir is low. So he's going to go for Hog Riders when he feels comfortable that he's able to defend and he knows that his opponent can't fully defend the hog rider so he's gonna go for the hog rider again um this time he's just gonna try to bait out some extra elixir he's gonna go for a fire spirit maybe even fireballs on top of the electro wizard surprised if he didn't do that yeah i guess he just didn't want to he's probably just looking at it. he's like okay if i go in for a fireball there then i might not have elixir to defend because he, he, his opponent was at 10 elixir there that would make sense um minor comes through doesn't really break through at all he's gonna have to ice spirit on top of the prince and then he can hog rider to go and pull back the prince again if he wants um doesn't make that much of a difference he's gonna go cycle musketeer in the back he's gonna ice golem kite the prince to the other side i think that's what he's gonna do or he might cycle ice golem and then cycle skeleton so that the prince doesn't connect on anything he's gonna have to cycle another musketeer here so then he can snipe the miner and uh notice his placements of the musketeers they're either in the very very middle so then the mega minions the princes in the middle will also go towards that or they're off to the side so it really depends on the situation sometimes he's going to be cycling in the middle if his opponent can't go in for a fireball like this guy just doesn't even have fireball in the deck so he's not that scared um other times it will be off to the side a little bit more so if his opponent didn't have a, a minor because uh he wouldn't have to worry about the uh 
both of his towers shooting the miner at the same time. Um, that's why he's dropping in the middle. He wants both the towers to shoot the miner. He also wants to pull his opponent's units a little bit further as well. But if your opponent has fireball, you don't want to drop your musketeers near the cannon too much because then the opponent would just fireball on top of the musketeer, the cannon, and the tower all at once. So it really depends on the deck that you're playing against. If your opponent doesn't have a big spell, definitely want to do those placements that we just saw. Um, all right, let's jump into the next one. Let's just keep going. Let's keep vibing. Um, also, huge thank you to everyone that's here. I love how people beat these kind of matchups when they're playing against a uh, cannon. Yeah, cannon's so cool. One of those cards that is one of the best cards in the game when used effectively. Yo, what's up, Sosa? What's going on, man? We're reviewing the best player in the world at 2.6 Hog Rider right now. Okay. So, we're on the next game. We'll see what happens here. Let's go, let's go. So, Cycling Ice Gold at the start. Not necessarily a bad play. Um, usually, the cards that you want to save in your hand are like Musketeer, Fireball. You don't really want to cycle those at the start. Cycling Skeletons and Ice Spirit are great. Um, you'll typically see people that are really good at 2.6 cycling hog rider at the start or ice spirit at the river or, as their two favorite plays. So if you guys uh, want to incorporate that in your own gameplay, cycle the ice spirit at the river because it gives you damage or cycle hog rider and try to catch your opponent out of position where they won't have uh, their building or tornado in their hand because there's a lot of times they just don't have that. So goblin drill, it gets fully countered by skeletons plus log. If you guys are able to body block the first goblin with the skeletons, then you're able to counter it. Um, he's always going to be dropping like a cannon in the middle or an ice golem up top, making sure that the Golden Knight is never able to dash onto the tower. But admittedly, if I was Yersin, I would lose this matchup like 9 out of 10 times. This is a very bad matchup. If you're playing against someone against Goblin Drill, um, it's not necessarily like an easy card to beat because it can get directly on top of the tower and you don't have a Valkyrie, you don't have a Dark Prince. Um, just a little bit scary, obviously. So uh, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. Uh, he's going to go Ice Golem plus Hog Rider because he knows that his opponent is going to have Tornado, so it's going to be harder for the opponent to defend. Since if you go for Ice Comb Hog Rider just in those positions that he just did, his opponent won't be able to pull both of the units to the King Tower like he would be able to with a standalone Hog Rider. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, he's going to go for Skeletons here. I think he's going to save the Ice Comb and Ice Spirit for the Goblin Drill, most likely. Uh, the Giant Skeleton will pop on the Cannon, so the Cannon will just straight up die here. There isn't too much that Yersin can do, but he knows that his opponent doesn't have a big spell, so he's going to cycle Musketeer in the back for sure. I'd be very surprised if he didn't go Musketeer in the back. Yeah, there it is. So, um, yeah, he's going to cycle Musketeer. He's going to stack up as many of those as possible, try to keep it alive. As I said before, uh, you want to apply opposite lane aggression in almost every single situation that you're playing against someone that has a more aggressive deck than you. If they've got, like, a beatdown deck with Cannon Cart and Golden Knight and, you know, a pretty aggressive um, formulation of cards, you don't want to give them the availability of building up a huge push and then just having all the stuff go in the same side. So even if you have more damage in the right-hand side like Gearson did originally, he started to go to the left-hand side just like he did against the, the giant player, and he switched it up. The Musketeer locked under the tower. Yeah, that he got more damage there, but it's not going to be that big of a difference. Um, one thing that Yersin's going to probably do is... Oh, yeah, I was going to say Fireball, because that would kill everything. I was wondering because it got out of range. I was like, maybe he doesn't do that there. Um, usually, uh, a cannon will completely counter a cannon cart. So if the cannon cart's coming at you, you just go in for the cannon and shut it down, and then it's a better trade because it's going to be a plus two trade for you. Um, Alright, so he'll probably fireball on this if there's more stuff stacked up. I think he's going to go for skeletons and just make sure that everything stacks up a little bit more. He's hoping that his opponent goes in for a magic archer or something doesn't happen. Very unfortunate for Yersin. Uh, he's going to go in for an ice golem here so then he can body block the golden knight and the cannon cart. And the magic archer is going to come down. Easy fireball value. There's no doubt that he takes that. The only thing is, like, he might have wanted to wait a little bit so then he could fireball the second cannon cart for him. But the musketeer was out of range, so it didn't matter that much. What a sick prediction of a log on skeletons. Wow, that was filthy. Because that gave him an extra hit. So well played. The, again, like, Yersin is just so, like, seamlessly unafraid of everything that comes at him. Going for pre-logs, making um, pretty big assertions of Elixir with a Hog Rider, Ice Golem, Log Push all at once. Like, not not really being phased. Uh, a Log plus a couple Musketeer. I think a Log plus a Musketeer shot, does that kill a Magic Archer? I don't think so. I don't know. I know that two Logs does kill a Magic Archer, so if you guys are ever wanting to cycle a Log early on and then get back to another one, two Logs does finish off a Magic Archer, so that's an interaction that most people don't know. Also, if you're playing Log Bait with Dark Goblin, two Logs plus two Dark Goblin shots does finish off a Magic Archer as well. Anyway, Ice Spirit, Log coming down. The Golden Knight is a very broken card and one of the best cards in the game if you guys haven't played it before. <laughs> It's, uh, it's pretty good for a reason. Goes in for a Hog Rider Prediction. Again, the Cannon Card doesn't die. That's why it's an S-tier card. 
Um, even after the first form dies, the second one, like, it's spell resistant. So you kill the first one, and then the overkill doesn't go onto the second form. So that's why it's such an annoying card. He's going to go for a Hog Rider at that moment. It still slips through for a Hog Rider damage. So the reason why he's so freaking good at this game is he goes in for Hog Riders and defends at the same time. If there's anything that you guys can pull away and incorporate into your own gameplay, is look at these replays and look at the time he Hog Riders and double or triple Elixir. Those points are the points that you need to start trying to do while feeling comfortable defending. It is so easy to defend with 2.6 Hog Rider comparatively to where it was like years ago where no one knew how to defend. But the timing that he went in for Hog Riders, those are things that you guys need to incorporate. Is he hog riding when his opponent's low at elixir when he knows that he can defend? That's what separates him apart from all the other hog rider players that I've seen. He's just so, so disgustingly good at just sniffing out the right timings and going in. This is another Sparky deck. We can show that later if we want to. But, um, a couple Sparky decks in a row. See if there's anything else. Um, yeah, so there's a, a there's a giant deck. Let's, let's show the recruits first. Actually, no, we'll show the Sparky one because we'll end up showing the recruits one too. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll show this one as well. Um, also, just want to say a huge thanks for everyone that's here. A little bit of BM. Yeah, there's always a little bit of BM at top ladder. Everyone just throws out BM whenever they win. I mean, there's a lot of stakes there. So there's generally going to be a little bit more hard feelings when they win or lose. Um, yeah, let's go into the next one. So he's cycling Musketeer in the back, same lane as the Dark Prince. He's going to probably Ice Spirit this just because he wants to make sure that the Dark Prince doesn't connect to the... Uh, the tower or the musketeer also the dark prince nerf right so i'm gonna say it's a straight up nerf in a lot of situations it has two percent less hp or three percent less hp that affects every single matchup when they did that change but the jumping over the river to block a building that affects some matchups so i would say that that rework that they did they needed to not nerf the dark prince's hp and the prince's hp it feels bad man so this guy's gonna have a different variation i wonder how he's gonna defend this is he gonna cycle back to an ice golem oh he went for an ice spirit that was so good. See, the difference between him and me is I would have looked at my hand and I would have been like, okay, I only have Ice Golem here. I got to drop my Ice Golem. But he cycled Log, then he cycled Skeletons. or No, he cycled Log and then an Ice Spirit. So he thought a couple steps ahead, memorizing his card order so then he could make the best possible play. And then he used the Ice Golem on top of the Sparky so that when the Ice Golem popped, it slowed down the Sparky so that it didn't get another shot, right? So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, when you're playing 2.6 Hog Rider, you also have to identify what are my next two cards and how can I use those. Don't just look at your hand because you can cycle one Elixir card and then get back to the next card in your hand that you uh, that you remember. So you can not just use the cards in your hand, you can use the cards, two cards deeper into your hand. So if you memorize that, that's another thing that can separate you apart. That's just taking a look at what do I have here in my arsenal that I can get to. Uh, which is not something that a lot of people don't a lot of people don't think about that because they're typically playing like decks like this guy the star alliance japanese bro that has five elixir cards in his deck he, he can't look two steps ahead because his deck doesn't allow him to right so that's just something to keep in mind um he's gonna go cannon and then ice spirit he's gonna save skeletons wonder why i guess he decided to save skeletons because he can fully surround a sparky with that and he's able to soak up more sparky shots um didn't necessarily matter. Ooh, he misses one of the minions, but I don't think that's going to matter either. He's going to log and then he's going to Ice Spirit, and that should completely counter the Sparky. Notice how he was able to log, so then the Sparky didn't shoot the Ice Spirit. That's another thing that you can do with Electro Wizards, Wizards, whatever it is. You log the unit, and then you make sure that your Fire Spirit or Ice Spirit connects, whereas it would typically die. It would typically die to a Wizard. It would typically die to a Sparky. But the Sparky gets knocked back, so it's not able to shoot at that exact moment, so then the Ice Spirit's able to stun it. That's something that I've never really picked up or thought about. And that's a cool interaction that I'm throwing in my own gameplay. All right, guys? Like, I love watching good players that know how to play their decks at the top level. Because you just learn all these inter interesting interactions. And you can just elevate your gameplay. Even if you don't play 2.6 Hog Rider, that's something that you guys can start incorporating into your stuff. Um, at least against Sparky. So cycle your Skeletons against it. Don't, don't cycle your Ice Spirit. Save your Ice Spirit and then use Log plus Ice Spirit to guarantee that the Sparky gets frozen. All right, so he's going to go in for another Hog Rider here, get Skeletons down because he doesn't need to do anything else. I think the Musketeer and the uh, the Tower finish that off. He Fireballs on the Minion Horde instead of going for anything else just because he wants the damage. And his opponent doesn't have Mini P.E.K.K.A. in Cycle. So what is Yersin going to do here? Is he going to go for a Hog Rider? Is he going to go Ice Golem, Ice Spirit, Hog Rider? Or is he just going to defend? Because that would have been really ballsy. I think he would have won the game because I don't think the Wizard would have been able to stop that. See, that's just one of those things that like I think it's impossible to know. But I think that that would have been pretty cool just to see him go balls to the walls. It's really hard to identify your opponent's exact deck. 
But he's going to cycle multiple Musketeers because his opponent doesn't have a big spell. So this guy is literally just going to be livid. Oh my gosh. Again, the Log plus Ice Spirit on top of the Sparky. Such a filthy combination. He's playing three Musketeers without the three Musketeers in his deck, guys. That's what he's doing out here. Straight up. He's going to go Ice Golem again. He's going to go Skeletons here. He's going to Fireball probably on top of the Minion Horde. Then Ice Spirit on top of the Dark Prince or go Cannon. Oh, wow. Ice Spirit's on the Sparky, so the Hog Rider gets another hit. Wow. Just show us how good you are again. I don't even understand how you think about this stuff. Jeez, dude. Literally playing like 3D chess while everyone else is playing checkers. He's going to Fireball. And he's going to Log twice. So he's going to win the game. Well, that's going to be it. Um, there's nothing that this homie can do here. This was not even this was not even close. This was literally not even close. You're able to cycle multiple ice golems and just body block for everything and slow down all of his opponent's stuff. Oh my gosh, that's just disgusting. That was just absolutely disgusting. So alright, well let's let's uh I think we have a couple more games. Yeah, we barely have any more. Um let's just get through them. We are almost done out here, guys. Couple more. Uh, watching pros is so inspiring, especially when I'm in Arena 8. Yeah, yeah, dude. You get to learn so much every time. Um, this is not me. I'm, I'm commentating one of the best players in the world. This is literally Yersin CZ. If you guys don't know who he is, he has a YouTube channel. I also have it in the description of the video. So if you guys want to check out more commentary, or not, I don't think he commentates it, but he, he does put up gameplay every single, um, I, he used to do it every day, but he, he does put out a lot of commentary and gameplay. Um, check it out. His channel is in the description. Uh, really, really nice guy. Also, if you guys like this, I can do this with different players in the future. If you guys want to see more high-level gameplay from the best players in the world with their specific deck, I'm down to do this. So let me know. I can give a, pros, a former pro's insight on the, the type of strategies that they deploy. I can highlight some of their interactions that they do. And uh, if you guys like this, I'm definitely down to in the future. So yeah, let me know. So another Sparky player out here. Let's we'll see what else happens. Um... This guy's got Giant Sparky with Mirror, though, so it's going to be a little bit different. If you guys ever hate playing against Giant decks or Sparky decks, I feel like these uh, these games will show you how to wreck it. Um, all right, so, yeah, I guess he's going to go and cycle Skeletons to go and kite the minions. No, he's not going to because the Musketeers just going to kill everything. Never mind. Wow, he's just hard chilling right now. What an amazing situation. His, his opponent's got Mini Packers, so he's not going to try to go and spam too much stuff. He knows that Minipaka will get distracted by Skeletons, so he goes in for Musketeer plus Skeletons there. Oh my gosh, that was disgusting! And then his opponent has to go for a Mirror Minipaka. He knows that Minipaka is not going to be on cycle for a long time. So he's going to go in for a Cannon and an Ice Spirit to pull the uh, Minipaka. So then, first off, the Cannon's going to stay alive forever. So then his opponent can't go in for a Giant. He has to Arrows. A lot of times what would happen here is if the opponent knew that he could go in for a giant at the river, he would completely stack the other tower and all in. But he couldn't because the cannon was in cycle still. Really smart to keep that alive with an ice spirit. Um, he went in for a hog rider because he knew that mini pack was the only card that would scare him because he could fireball on a minion horde. Just so good. Thanks for this. I love 2.6 hog rider and I watch their vids, but I appreciate the breakdowns without too much gameplay pauses. Yeah, man, uh, if, if you like this, I'm definitely down to do it in the future with different decks and different players. And uh, I don't know, I just, I want to make sure that you guys get fast and fun content. And I think this is definitely a good way of doing it. Um, who, who do I think is the best uh, 2.6 player? I think, I, I think Yersin is the best 2.6 player of all time. That's my opinion. You guys can have different opinions. I think he is the best 2.6 player of all time. Just a super, super good player. I've always been incredibly impressed by his gameplay. So that's that's my opinion. You guys can have a different one. I'm not the uh, the person that knows all in the world. I'm definitely not. But everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But yeah, Yerson just took a very easy win. Um, same thing that we saw last game, abusing the fact, hey, my opponent doesn't have a mini pack in cycle. I'm gonna go for a hog right on the other side. You will find their answers in their deck, and then you go and punish them when they don't have it in cycle. Whether they're spamming at you with the mini pack at the river, or they just don't have it in cycle because you out cycle them. That's when you go in for the Hog Rider. All right, so we have two more games, and then we're done for the day. Here's an easy W. Yeah, dude. So this guy, Zafkiel, is the best Royal Recruits player in the world. And I don't, I, I think that this guy is just really talented. So this is going to be a fun game. Yersin CZ it might log this, because if you log on top of the, the Goblin Cage, it gives you a Hog Rider hit. It does give you a Hog Rider hit. If the Goblin Cage is about to die and you log it, you damage down the Goblin Cage Brawler and you get hit on the tower. 
I guess he decided not to do that because he didn't know if his opponent was going to go for Royal Recruits at the river. Because if, if Zafkiel had Royal Recruits, maybe he would have dropped it at the river because he had the Goblin Cage counter pushing. So that might be the reason why. Not 100% sure. He's definitely going to fireball that. There's no way, right? Yeah, that was just too easy. It was, that was too much value. You just look at the, the fireball value and before your very eyes, you're like, yeah, I got to take that easy. So he's going to log on top of the Royal Recruits early on. And the reason why people do this, they should, right? Uh, most, most of the time they do that. Oh, wait, what? Okay, I've never not... Okay, probably because probably he didn't want to get Rail Hogs. But usually in the late game, um, 2.6 players will just log the Rail Recruits and then get damage on the tower. Oh, you know why? He wants to get an Elixir advantage in Single Elixir. He's not caring about that. He's like, in Single Elixir, I can actually break through. So he's going to go in for a Hog Rider, Musketeer, and Ice Golem. Um, he's going to log the Goblin Cage, as I said before, because he's going to try to get a Hog Rider hit. He disrupts the Zappies. He does get that hit because of the log. You guys ever log the Goblin Cage? That is the best strategy. He just didn't do it at the start um, because he was probably scared of Royal Recruits. But you're going to see that every single time. Whenever he gets a chance, he's going to log the Goblin Cage. He's going to make sure that doesn't happen. See, this is this is why the Recruits player is someone that I look up to personally because this is my main deck. Knows when uh, Yersin is low. Goes in for the Fly Machine. Out for blood. This guy is one of the best players in the world for that reason. So let's see how Yersin comes back. He's going to go for an Ice Spirit to stun the Zappies. Then he's able to get maybe two hits with the Hog Rider. I think he does get that second hit because of that. Oh my gosh. I feel like he was robbed. I feel like this man was just robbed in daylight. The fact that that Hog Rider didn't get the second hit, disgusting. I don't think the Hog Rider would have gotten denied all damage. So maybe the, the Ice Spirit wasn't worth it there. Yeah, I don't think the Ice Spirit was worth it. But it's hard to know. Like when you're playing the game, how would you know that? One thing that he's doing differently than what I've seen from most 2.6 players which maybe just sets, sets him apart from everyone else, is he is not logging on the recruits. He is saving his elixir. Oh my gosh. He's saving the logs so he can push back the rail hogs and the recruits when they get close to the tower instead of just logging on the tower. Wow. So that's not something how... I, that's never how I've played 2.6, but I guess I'm going to start doing that. If I need to save damage, instead of getting damage with my log, I'm going to start logging on defense when the recruits and then the... Uh, the Royal Hogs come on my weaker tower. Wow, so that's something to keep in mind. Like, I guess when you get in sticky and problematic positions, you just don't log on the recruits that often. He's probably not going to do it again here. We'll see. We'll see if he decides to log. I think he might save it again for the left-hand side because that's what he's been doing consistently here. So, yeah, he's going to save his log, and he's going he's gonna to log again in the left-hand lane, trying to damage down the recruits and the Royal Hogs. He's really focusing on logging the Royal Hogs, by the way. You guys noticed how he didn't even try to hit the recruits there with the log? He just cared about hitting the Rail Hogs. Because the Rail Hogs are the thing that are going to prioritize doing damage to you, right? The the thing is, if you let the Rail Hogs lock onto your tower, you're screwed. But the Rail Recruits, you can kite them all around the map. He goes in for the Hog Rider, another really slippery Hog Rider. Logs on top of the Goblin Cage Brawler, gets more damage. So the only times I've ever seen him go in for a log is on top of the Goblin Cage, which I've seen a lot. And then he's going in for logs on top of the, uh, the, the offense from his opponent when he goes in for Rail Hogs. So I just really want to focus um, those log timings because that's the main thing that I've noticed as a differentiator. Um, he's going to fireball and then just win the game. So just super well played. I even wanted to say well played there. I was going to click the well played emote. Dude's an animal. I, I was so impressed. All right. So are we on the last game of the day? I think, uh, yeah, I think we are. So we're going to watch the very last one and then um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream. If you guys did, make sure to drop a follow. Uh, subscribe to this channel for more videos. I put put out daily videos on the channel. Uh, and comment if you guys want to see another player uh, in the future. But of course, check out Yersin. He's literally one of the best players in the world. So check him out for sure. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, this guy is going to go in for another Hog Rider. Gets me hoarded. Um, likely just going to go for Musketeer and Skeletons. It just makes sense. So during this downtime, um, yeah. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the stuff that I do. If you guys haven't seen my main channel, SirTagCR, definitely subscribe to that. I have 500,000 subscribers almost. And we put out daily videos with upwards of 20 hours in every single video edited. So all these videos are some of the highest quality things that you'll see on YouTube for Clash Royale. And uh, I put out interesting, unique decks every single day. I'm a former pro player. I have a lot of fun playing the game. Make sure to check out that channel that I'm about to spam in the chat if you guys haven't seen that before. The so SirTagCR on YouTube... Check that out. That is my main channel. If you guys don't know who I am, definitely consider watching the videos there. On a daily basis at 3 p.m. Eastern, every day, you can expect a video. 
Also, thank you again for the $10 Canadian. You should stream more, bro. I love the videos. Keep doing what you do. Yeah, I'm trying to stream every single challenge and every single um, new event that Clash Royale comes. I'm going to be streaming on this channel. And maybe I continue to do more live pro player breakdowns on the channel too. I'm definitely down to do that. If you guys are interested and you want to see that, I'm here for it. So one thing that I've noticed, Yersin going for the early cannon in that type of situation. I guarantee you he's going to get back to another cannon and double elixir. But right now he can go in for an ice spirit and that could completely counter the uh, the giant and the, the the rest of the spam. That was really unlucky timing. Oh my goodness. Do you guys see that? The ice spirit just whiffed on bats and it didn't hit the, the night witch. That's so unlucky, man. I'm sorry about that. Damn. At least the musketeer is going to bait out some extra elixir here, but... You know, that would have been a lot better if uh, if the Ice Spirit just was able to hit the Night Witch earlier. That would have been a better vibe. He's going to go in for an Ice Gold. Oh, no. <laughs> Tragic timing. He's going to get minored here, right? Right? Oh. That's confusing. I think maybe he was trying to go for a miner, so then Yersin would hear the miner sound, so then Yersin would fireball on top of the minion horde because he would have to. I don't know. Or maybe he was just trying to use it on defense against the, um, the Musketeer and the Hog Rider that was coming at him. Yersin's just like, screw it. I'm just going to cycle another Musketeer in the back. I'm up so much. You can Fireball and Log and shut down the Night Witch. And then the Night Witch doesn't spawn bats anymore. So then the Giant's just sitting there by itself. And it's like, I have no friends. I have no comrades. And Yersin, the only reason he did that, I'm going to tell you guys straight up. The only reason he did that is it's a double elixir. So if the game got dicey, he was able to cycle back to another Fireball and then kill the Minion Horde. So do not go in for a Fireball and a Log on top of a Night Witch player that has Minion Horde. Unless you can cycle back to another fireball. And the only time you can ever do that is cycling your fireball before you cycle your log so you get back to that first before you get back to the log. And in double elixir when you have enough elixir to get back to it. So I just want to make sure that's a high priority for you guys. If you fireball plus log on top of a night witch, do it in double elixir and cycle your fireball first. Pearson's going to go for hog riders because he knows that his opponent has trash counters to it. If the opponent has to go in for a log plus minions, that's a five elixir investment to counter a four elixir hog rider. Not necessarily going to be a vibe for the dude here. Gonna go for a very ambitious giant at the river. And Yersin's like, okay, if you want a miner, I've got Ice Spirit and I've got Skeleton. So I'm gonna be fine against the Hog Rider. One thing that you guys probably just noticed there, he logged on top of the miner and he had Skeleton's damage unit down a little bit. And that was enough to keep the Musketeer alive. So if you can log and push back the miner and make sure that the Musketeer retargets onto that, you can keep your Musketeer alive. So that's just something to keep in mind. Sometimes it's worth logging on top of the miners as well. Ice Spirit plus Log, those are two phenomenal things. If your opponent has Zap, you can still keep your Musketeer alive if it's not targeting the Musketeer. Uh, or if the Musketeer is targeting the Miner instead of targeting the, the big tanky boy. So, that yeah, was, was really fun games. Um, just going to show you guys Yersin's profile if you haven't seen him before. Um, obviously, incredibly talented. Over 10 top ladder finishes uh, in, the, in the top 1,000. And uh, just a really, really nice dude. So... Make sure to check him out. The link, the YouTube link, I will also post it in the chat as well. Um, really, really quick. Pearson CZ. If you guys want to check out more of his stuff, I will be posting his link really quick. Um, this is the best 2.6 player in the entire world. So if you guys want to follow his channel, subscribe to him, check him out, tell him that I sent you. I'm sure he'll give you guys a lot of love. I like seeing nice people like him at the top. Um a really good guy and then of course if you guys haven't already subscribe to my youtube channel here for more daily streams or not daily streams but daily videos you're gonna see something here every single day whether it's a cool fun interaction that you guys have never seen before a funny moment or a video on a brand new deck you will see it every single day so hope to see you guys here in the future love you guys lots subscribe tell me in the comment section what you guys want to see for the next player that i review if this does well i'll consider doing that again in the future with a different deck um i think that most players in the world would uh just share me replays so i think i could get almost anyone besides moogie just let me know and we'll make it happen love you guys lots subscribe to my main youtube channel sir tag cr and uh that chat or that that link is in the chat as well and i'll see you guys in the future love you guys and have an amazing rest of your night deuces